Welcome back to Elden Ring. Before we fight the final bosses, there's a couple things I missed. First one is a cave all the way back, kind of near the beginning of the game in Limgrave. Should be right about there. Whoa, that's a lot of bloodstains. Hmm. I don't think this is the way you're supposed to access it. There it is. Whatever's in here is going to be so easy. And I think we're going to want a torch. Got the jitters. Did you just try to attack me? What the heck? I have, don't I have the beast repellent torch? Okay, looks like we have to go down. Unless could be an invisible wall. Beast repellent torch, right? Yeah, it is. This place is kind of maze like. the upper item. It does look like it could be a hidden path, but it's not. Now, I saw back down where we just were, there was a place to drop. So I want to check the other way first. Oh, I can't get back up there, can I? Ah, yes. Nothing. Oh, I'm sorry.
Do these count as beasts, actually? Would you attack me? Okay. Octopus ahead. Oh, just the baby ones. There's something over there. Let's take a look at the weapon first. Shamshir curved sword. Curved sword with a thin blade of ample length. Light of weight despite its larger size, its slicing attacks come in rapid succession. A devastatingly powerful weapon in the hands of a skilled swordsman. Replaceable Art of War, or whatever it's called. Ash of War. Bit of a dex weapon. Very modest requirements, because you could totally find this place in the early game. What's it look like? No, pretty. Time for boss. Oh, I thought it would just lead to that item up there. Hmm. Ah, what the heck. Let's do it right now. Why not? It's not like I'm going to die. Try legs and then try stomach. Did like no damage to me. Oh no. Oh, it hurts so bad. Dancer charm. Ooh, that's pretty. What the heck? How? Raises attack power with lower equipment load. 
A cloth doll depicting a dancer garbed in blue, an ancient heirloom of some sort. The dancer in blue represents a fairy who in legend bestowed a flowing sword upon a blind swordsman. Blade in hand, the swordsman sealed away an ancient god, a god that was wrought itself. Let's check out the other way. Oh my god. 5,000 damage. Offer something? Okay, then it just loops around to here. The next thing that I've missed is a spell in the Converted Fringe Tower, I think it's called. This thing right in front of us. It is right here. You can even see it on the map. I just never went there. It's above the Black Knife Catacombs and east of the Friendly Flame Village outskirts. No, you don't. Do you have to wear that to get entrance? Try gesturing. Hey! There we go. Is? Oh, there's two spells. Cannon of Hyma and Gavel of Hyma. Let's try them out. So the new spells, Cannon of Hyma, lobs an explosive magic projectile in an arc. Only takes 25 int. 
pretty low requirement. Takes 45 FP, so pretty expensive. Should do a good amount of damage. Then there's the gavel. Attacks using a magic great hammer, also 25 int. Only 25 FP, so not too much. Compare it to Comet, which takes 26. I think you can charge up the cannon, so let me just tap it. And now let me hold it down. Ooh, much bigger. Wait, does that also take more FP? Tap. Charge. No, I think it's the same amount. Yeah, we'll check the damage in a minute. Try the gavel. I'm just gonna tap it. Gonna hold it. Doesn't seem to make any difference. Oh, you can do a double attack. Like, you get a bit of a speed advantage if you do two of them back to back, but then the third one, it just kind of resets. So you can do a two hit combo. One, two, then it just resets. So that takes about as much as Comet. So let's compare its damage to Comet. Can't use that on horseback. But I can use the cannon on horseback. Makes sense. Let's try some fire slugs. Why not? Let's try the gavel. Actually, let's test out Comet. Let's give Comet the best chance by charging it up fully. 1,156. Gavel. 875. Let me get closer. Okay, that did more damage. Hmm. It's a little bit less damage for the same FP, but only if you charge up the Comet. If you don't charge it up, this probably does a little more. Hmm, I imagine this probably does a lot of poise damage, though. I want to try it on, like, a normal human. Let's try it out on some real nasty guys. Didn't break their poise, even with two hits of it. But it does knock them down. Whereas Comet certainly doesn't knock them down. And what about if I just hit them with the splash? The splash is pretty big. That still knocks them down. Okay, let's try out cannon. Not charged. I don't even think they really hit him. Not directly, anyway. Not charged. Ah. Ooh. Knocked him flat on their ass. Let's charge it. Aw, oh, fuck you. It doesn't always knock them on their ass. Let's try down an enemy that doesn't have a shield. Or at least isn't using it. 900. Compared to just Comet. 800. But that's uncharged. Charged. Oh, and in a group. I think it should have pretty good... Oh, yeah. 
Pretty good group potential. Yeah, it's pretty good at um, groups and good at knocking people on their ass. It's quite expensive, though, because it does cost probably a little bit less than two comets and only does maybe a little bit more damage than one comet. Right, where was I? Oh, yeah, I was going to finish the game. First try. I kind of don't want to skip this. I want to watch it again. So epic. All right, I need to figure out just simply how to fight them. Ow. I freeze them with two. What the? Wait, why did that only do 50 damage? Okay, there, that froze him. So I've made some changes to my equipment, trying to figure out how to fight them. Put on the Halic Drake Talisman plus two, vastly boosting holy damage negation. And I also put on the sacred. Well, it was just called the Brass Shield, but I made it sacred by giving it the Golden Parry. And in doing so, it increased the Holy Damage Negation, also upgraded it to max. So this is basically the highest Holy Damage Negation I can get on a shield that I can actually wield. Coming in at 67.5%. And a very good guard boost as well. 95 physical, so quite good all around. But yeah, particularly good against Holy and I think it's going to protect it even more than it says because I'm going to be using the Scholar's Shield, which boosts the shield's protection. So yeah, I'm going to have a lot of holy damage protection. The big thing I want to know is, can it be strong enough that I can just hold this up and just block all of the ranged holy attacks? Jesus Christ, that's loud. Let's see. Because they have a lot of very powerful ranged holy attacks. Oh, wow. Yeah, that blocked a good amount of it. Took a lot of stamina. Yeah.
Jesus Christ. <laughs> hmm. So that's the kind of attacks that I was trying to get it to block. Ooh. Even with the Scholar's Shield, it's just ruining my stamina. Yeah, ice seems to work really well against him. All right, this is my first time since the original time I was here, seeing the turn into the second phase, so I want to watch this again. I don't know if this is going to reach. No. Oh, that's fine. No, now the range on those is really, really short. Comet? Oh, geez. Whoa, 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 what is that? I think it's gonna explode. Oh no, it's doing that. Hoo -hoo, hoo -hoo, that's so close. <gasps> what is that? Oh, that's so pretty! It's probably gonna kill me, but it's very pretty. Oh, I have no healing left. Uh-oh. Oof.
Woohoo! God slain. Whew. That was difficult, but actually easier than millennia. Hmm. I think that took me, what, hour and a half? Maybe two hours at most? Millennia took me like four to five. <laughs> Whew. Oh, that looks like a blue summon sign. I wonder if that could be Ronnie. Summon Ronnie! Ah! The battle is over, I see. I do solemnly swear to every living being and every living soul. Now cometh the age of the stars, a thousand year voyage under the wisdom of the moon. Here beginneth the chill night that encompasses all, reaching the great beyond. into fear, doubt, and loneliness, as the path stretcheth into darkness. Well then, shall we? My fair consort eternal. <laughs> I love Ronnie. So that was one of the endings. I am curious if you can continue to play after the ending. I'm going to go ahead and skip the credits. Uh, begin Journey 2. If you do not start over now, you can choose to begin Journey 2 later at the Table of Lost Grace in the Round Table Hold. Okay, so I think that's implying we can continue to play. If I say no... Yeah, we come back to here. We'll have to look at what exactly we can do. I have one idea of one thing we can do post-game, now that we're Elden Lord. But first I want to know what we can get from the Elden Remembrance. America's Hammer takes faith, unfortunately. And Sacred Relic Sword, which also takes faith. Makes sense. It's a holy creature. So neither of those are useful. Let's see if he's ready to knight us finally. For the time being, I share command, at which time I am raising my hope it is. 
Hmm. Yeah, I thought Kenneth Hyde might finally be able to knight us. Since they said, come back when you're Elden Lord, and I think we are kind of Elden Lord now. Sort of, maybe? But, uh, nope, can't do that. I googled just to see whether there's anything else you can do post-game, but before the second playthrough. And it looks like there isn't. I wonder if that knighting thing might be like a stub for DLC, maybe? I have no idea if they're planning DLC for Elden Ring, but I would say probably. Message appraised. Oh, thanks. But yeah, um, I guess let's do an outro. I don't really know what to say. I feel like I've, because I've played this game for so, so long, both in terms of the months that I've played it and also the hours that I've played it. It is a massive, massive game. And because of that, I feel like it needs a massive outro, but I don't really know what to say. So I'll just keep it short and sweet, I suppose. This is truly an exceptional game. To be so long and yet so engaging throughout, almost never boring. I'd say the only times it was boring was when I was going to an old area I forgot or missed and, you know, fighting the enemies and bosses there that are so easy that I don't even have to dodge anything and can just spam attack. I would say that's about it, and that doesn't happen very often. So the vast majority of this massive game is so engaging. It's really an extraordinary accomplishment. So yeah, this has been Elden Ring. I freaking love it. It's incredible. I hope there's DLC, and if there is, I'm certainly absolutely going to play it. And if you've been with me throughout this journey, thank you so much for joining me.